Darren, it seemed like over the first four weeks or so, I think it was like, like 11 kick returns in the last five weeks. It's been like four or five. Has that been a shift in strategy, or has that just been a matter of more the balls getting kicked out of bounds? Sort of uh, I think it's a product of the success that Shahid has had um, as a player, both as a, a receiver and as a punt returner. I think that uh, if you look at kind of where the, the, the kickoffs have been landing against us more recently, there's not as many balls in the, in the field of play, and there's not as many balls uh, maybe near the goal line, if you will. Um, so, you know, I think in the first few weeks, people are always trying to kind of see what your design is, your scheme is, your, play, your returns are, all that kind of thing. And so uh, I think, number one, we were a little bit more aggressive, and number two, I think teams were a little less aggressive with their kickoffs. Uh, now, I think I think as you know, people see that Shahid's a dangerous player. I think there's some teams that are just saying, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna kick the ball eight nine yards deep in the end zone, and um, you know, not really take our chances and let him let him get a return off." So I think it's a little bit of both. So, but yeah, it has been at least in large part because they're not kicking it to him. And yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, for the most part, we've seen mostly touchback balls, if you will. You know, there's there's kind of that there's kind of a game plan when you take the field on kickoff return. Hey, if this ball lands in a certain area, a certain place, hey, we're going to take a shot or, you know, we're not kind of thing. And I think we've gotten more knots, knots than hots, if you will. So. Here's the thing about Ike's play that, that I love. Um, two weeks in a row, I watch Ike in pregame and, he, and, and these are kind of the little things that no one notices. You know, he goes out there in Indy two weeks ago and He's out there with Lou pregame, you know, and it's kind of just his warm-up clothes and Lou's warming up and he's down there by the goal line fielding balls. And what happens in the game? He fields a ball inside the five. This past week, again, I'm out there doing my pregame warm-up stuff. I look out, Ike's down there by the goal line fielding, going in punts with Lou and letting him hit the ground and playing the ball. And so, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I, it really doesn't happen by mistake. There's a guy that's been working at it. And ever since Ike's walked in the door here, uh, he's a very, very well-rounded special teams player. There's many things he can do, but he really works at his craft. This is not happening by accident. This is a guy that really watches film, studies his opponent, studies his situation. He's got a high football IQ, and I just love the fact that literally I looked out there last week and saw him in that exact same spot on the field, fielding those balls, and then what happens? Exact play in the game, he makes a great play to punch it out of bounds. And so am I surprised? No, because I know the time and effort he's put into it, but uh, but it was a fantastic play, and it was a big deal because it really changes how teams play that. When you're backed up in your own against your own goal line, your play selection, all those things, they ended up punting in that drive. We got a return, we got a penalty, we had better field, and we kind of controlled the field position at the end of that game. And I think that was a big part of the, the turnovers and the field position was a big part of why we won that game last week. So really, really kudos to Ike for a really great play. With Blake, is it just kind of like a young player you got to ride the ups and downs a little bit? And you guys are confident that, that on the other side of it? Or? You know, I think it's a little bit like we talked last week, a little bit, um, you know, like we talked about with Lou, is is really kind of perspective. Um, yes, there's what you just said in terms of understand that's a young player going through, a, you know, going through his rookie season. Um, I think just like I said last week with Lou, I think there's some things that Blake's done very, very well. Um, there's two field goals in particular that I personally, the, the last one last week and then the short one he had, against Houston are, are really kicks that, you know, we've got to make, you know, the other ones are some longer kicks and some, some, some scenarios. Um, but, uh, listen, he's done some, some things very, very well. Uh, again, perspective, right? So you look at the first year players in the league that are kickers, ironically, just like Lou, there's three others as well. Um, and if you kind of compare where he's at with those other guys, those other three guys were draft picks, he's not. So, uh, kudos to him on that as well. And, and he kind of stacks up with where, those other guys are. Anytime I've been involved with a rookie kicker in particular, um, there's going to be some peaks and valleys. Uh, like I said, I think the thing with him is you've got to get more consistent. The operation's got to be as consistent as possible with, with the snap kick hold, you know, or hold kick rather, the battery. And so uh, it, it's definitely a work in process, no, or, or progress rather. So it's a process with those guys. Um, I think Blake is a very capable NFL kicker. We just got to get more consistent, like we talked about last week with Luke. Was there something with the operation? Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that every operation has been exact. Uh, we've been able to overcome that at, at times, and, and, and other times we haven't. Um, but I think that Zach, Lou, Blake, they work constantly on that, and they've, they've really, I think they've done a nice job. Has every, has every operation been exactly the way we want it? No, it hasn't. And then sometimes you can see with the rotation of the ball, the way it comes out on some of those field goals, that's, that's kind of the best tell. And so, 
Uh, but all three guys have been, have been working at it. And anytime you have a new battery like that, you know, with a rookie holder, with a veteran snapper and a rookie kicker, it's, it's not like you're just replacing one. It's really two parts of the three that have been new. And so that's, you know, I don't think, I don't think enough credit gets put in that or enough onus gets put on that, uh, if you will. Um, but I, like I said, uh, it's, it's something that we've gotten a lot better at as, as time goes on here, and, and I, I, I have confidence we'll, we'll you know, work through it. Yeah, Aaron, was there something on the operation on, on any of the misses this year? Uh, yeah, there was one. Yeah, there was one that, that I, you know, I think that it wasn't exactly now. Again, if the kick is 45 yards instead of 47 yards, it goes in. So you're not even talking about it. But it's, you know, we end up hitting the upright, and, and so be it. So. It uh, wasn't exactly the way we wanted it, but at the same time, if you ask Blake, he would tell you, i got to make that kick. It was down, it was there, it was, you know, I was good. It just wasn't, wasn't really exact. Darren, it's easy from the outside to lump in the, this latest kick with the yeah. one in Green Bay as like the two sort of pressure kicks or, sure. you know, game-winning, game-clinching scenarios. What, what do you have to judge from? Does it look like he handles those the same way? Does it look like he handles the aftermath of those the same? I mean, how? how yeah, I, I think when we, it? I think when we evaluate the whole thing, it's got to be like it's got to be the body of work. You know, I, I, the one thing, you know, I'm not a big social media guy. I'm not on any of that. I don't even know what they're called. The thing we got to be careful of is we live in this hero or goat world where there's like no in between. So one week he's the NFC Special Teams Player of the Week. He's getting all this praise and he's the guy. The next week we miss a short kick and it's like the the, the sky's falling. And we got to be careful. I'm 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 the one telling him. I'm like I feel like I'm talking to my children. You know, stay off social media. No offense to you guys. Um, you know, you got to make just stay the course and and you know because it's it's like an all or nothing world we're living in. So I got to look at the when we evaluate the players, every player, you got to look at the body of work. His body of work since he's been here is a solid, solid body of work. Are there, like I said, are there the, the, the end of the kick in Green Bay or the short field goal in Houston, the game, kicks that we want back and got to get better at? Yes, but everything points to that this player is a very good player, and there's no question he's got to get more consistent. There's no question, like everybody, there's things he's got to work on. There's no question there's been some pressure kicks. Um, but, you know, last week's game is a great example. He hits a 55-yarder with probably 10 to 12 yards left on it, walks off the field with all kinds of confidence, and the very and, and he's feeling great about himself, and everybody's feeling great about him. And then all of a sudden, we hit the upright on a 47-yarder, and all of a sudden, it's, you know, it's, it's the sky's falling again. So we got to be careful not to have the emotional roller coaster. I think it's very important that position, maybe more than anybody, because every play is dissected. Um, and so, listen, if you look through the league, there are some very, very good kickers that have some misses. It's just the way it is. You know, I don't think that the Baltimore people are talking about getting rid of Justin Tucker. He's missed four kicks. You know, so it, it, it's it's a little bit of a, a, a microcosm of, of the world we're living in. It's like everything is, is do or die. So we got to be careful that we're not riding the wave. We're staying the course. We're kind of keeping, staying consistent with our process. And for a young kid, it could be a little bit more difficult than it can be for maybe an older veteran guy that's going through a rough patch because he's just getting started. Um, you know, I think DA mentioned that there's been many, many kickers throughout the league that have had some rough starts that teams move on from and they go elsewhere and they become pro bowlers. Daniel Carlson is one that comes to mind. Uh, Young Way Koo is a guy that comes to mind. Young Way Koo started his career three for six. He got cut by the Chargers. He just made his ninth game winner for the Falcons. You know, Daniel Carlson starts his career for the Vikings one for four. He gets cut. He goes on. He becomes an all pro and a pro bowl kicker for the Raiders. So it kind of goes back to Nick's point. You have to kind of weather the rough patches and know that what you have in the player or do you, you know, do you overreact? So it, 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 there's a fine line because they do affect everyone in the building. I know we get that. So. Well, let me ask you this. Know yeah. what you have in the player being the most important part of this expression. How, what gives you the confidence that you have the right guy to start with yeah. to ride the wave? Well, right I there? think the body of work is what he's shown. I think this is a guy, you know, I, he started off the year 11 for 12. All right. Well, we're seven for our last 11. That's not acceptable. That's got to be better. Um, all right. So, but you know, we still had that 11 for 12 guy. We had the guy that made his kicks in the pre. You know, we've seen the we've seen the leg strength. We've seen all the things that work. And so, in in my professional opinion, we get a guy here that's an NFL kicker. Um, and and the consistency thing has got to be the thing we get better at the most. You know, we got it. We can't have the, the peaks and valleys. So, like, yeah. t- talking about the body of work, like, yeah. is there such thing as like a clutch kicker, or is it just kind of like if you're a guy that makes your kicks, you're gonna make your kicks? Like, is it? Is there? No. I, listen, I, I think the opportunities present themselves as far as clutch kicks. I'm one of the. I'm a believer. This is me. I'm a believer. I think that's a little bit of a 
the 55 yarder was a clutch kick because it was at the time we took the lead so that was a clutch kick but it, so we just defining clutch kicks as the last four minutes of the game or we're we defining the game situation all that so you know so the 55 yarder hit a game winner in the preseason you know, all those things so i think we've had enough of those opportunities where we the two kicks in new england outdoors 50 plus yarders tough stadium those are big kicks so you know it's it's like i'm not a big believer in the uh yeah. how maybe the clutch kick is defined but but i think every kick i think every play and every time you go out there the field goal team the pat team is you have an opportunity to put points on the board so they're all important Given his background, yep. is Lou's style of punting somewhat different than the norm in the NFL? And if so, do you try and adapt your coverage to his style rather than turning into a conventional? Yeah. So it's it, it's it's really interesting the kind of the trend you're seeing more and more of these um, rugby Australian type punters, you know, be much more. Uh, probably, I, I think I saw a stat the other day. I think in the SEC, all but two of the punters are Australian. So you're seeing a wave of, of Australian punters and rugby-style punters. You look in our league: Wisniewski from the Niners, Dixon from Seattle, um, the the uh, the lefty from the Giants. His name escapes me at the moment. You know, all these guys are rugby-style guys, and so just like any player, less. I think what you do is you try to adapt their strengths, and you try to you know you try to adapt your punt coverage protection, scheme, game plan around what they do the best. And whether that's a directional punter, whether that's a rugby punter, whether that's a tr traditional guy. Um, and so with Lou, I think what we're trying to do here uh, throughout this season is, is we're trying to use his strengths um, and to the best of our ability. Like I said last week, there's some things he's really doing well. Limiting coverage return, or, or, uh, return yards, getting some, a lot of balls inside the 20, locating the ball. So we're trying to kind of use his strengths and uh, you know, not trying to turn him into a guy that he's not. I think that's important with any player. Same thing with your, you know, with, with all the guys. And so, uh, just like anybody else, uh, I think he does some things really well. And we're just trying to, you know, accentuate these. It's kind of it's Jamie Gillen, by the way. Jamie Gillen, thank you. Um, is it sorry, kind of Jamie? Idea no offense. <laughs> that like, so you could kick a 60-yard punt. It gets returned 12 yards. Or you could kick a 48-yard punt. It doesn't get returned at all. Would you? You'd prefer the 48-yarder because with no return, they can't. Yeah, yeah, listen, is that the idea? yeah, listen, I mean, at some point, you know, you, at some point you keep firing, the, you know, you're going to, you keep firing them in the middle of the field, you're going to, you're going to yeah. get one back at you because of, so it's, it's limiting the opportunities. I've said last week, there's some things that Lou's got to get better at. I think I'd like our net punting to be a little bit better than it is. I really want it to be north of 41 yards, really, when you look at the overall picture, we get, we're, we're creeping towards that number. Um, and there's some balls that we missed there, um, but, I, but he's also done some things very, very well, but yes. There's a bunch of different ways to get to that net 41 yard net average, 41 yard punts, or you know 60 yard punts with a 19 yard return. The end result's still the same. That's why I always say the net punting number is really the number that we're concentrating on the most. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Appreciate you, you guys.